So how many people here have played around with Gemini Cloud Assist? I'm just curious. Okay, not too much of the room. So that's actually good because I'm not assuming that you all are experts just yet, but I want to give you a bit of an appetizer. But I also want to give this some context because Gemini is a word that you've probably heard a lot of if you've been paying attention to Google for the last year. So like, is it a model? Is it a product? Is it a platform? Is it a like, yes? is the answer. It's kind of all of those things. So let's unpack what that really looks like. So I want to give you a, a definition. So it really represents kind of a way that we bring all of this together. And so Gemini Cloud Assist is going to be one of the things, one of the ways that the intelligence of Gemini is applied. Let me give you a picture for that. Extensible cloud intelligence is another kind of layman's definition that we give where you see information that flows in from natural language, from things like Stack Overflow, helping you visualize data. It really brings a lot of things together. And so I'm not gonna do too much in slides. I actually wanna do a bit more show and tell so you all can see it. Uh, and I'll also say for you all who are interested or for anyone watching online, we actually do have private previews available. So if you wanna sign up and play with it, I can probably help with that <laughs> and make sure that you all get access to, uh, to actually really touch this and do some of the things I'm gonna show you today, all right? So, this is another picture I want to give you. So we've talked a bit about Vertex today. We're actually going to have another dedicated session later today about Vertex. And we're actually going to find ourselves right here. So think of Gemini for Google Cloud as something that kind of sits above Vertex. This is a way that we apply the Gemini model and the intelligence there to specific ways to, um, to supercharge your workload. So we talked about AI on the platform. This is AI in the platform, how AI can supercharge the way you use Google Cloud not just for AI stuff, but for anything that you might be running there. This is separate from something like Google, Gemini for Google Workspace. So Gemini for Google Cloud is kind of where we're gonna focus. And then to drill down into this a little bit more, what are the types of things that we're gonna look at? So what I'm most excited about for Gemini Cloud Assist is that it's gonna save us time. And this is one of the biggest things that we need right now because there's so much coming at us, we have to be more efficient. We can't have the same level of technical debt and inefficiency that we did before because we won't have time to explore stuff. Uh, I spoke at an event in New York yesterday and I did a keynote and I asked the people there, so how many of you have new initiatives around AI, new stuff you've got to do? <laughs> Every hand went up. How many of you have new budgets and new people to do those things? Every hand went down. Because we all have day jobs we still have to do, so we have to get more efficient. So I got to throw a little bit of a non sequitur Bobbyism at you right now. So. On Twitter, if you follow me at all, you'll see that I love talking about cloud and I like to encourage people to take care of themselves. A bad workout is better than a good excuse. <laughs> and the reality is we have to make progress even when it's less than ideal, right? The perfect can be the enemy of the good. And right now we're still figuring a lot of things out, but there could be some practical things that actually help. The other reason why I think something like Gemini Cloud Assist is really powerful is this one. Training without application doesn't age well. You can't be an expert in everything anymore. So when you took that class, you, you packed everything you could into your, into your brain, but it's going to be stale two days from now because things are changing. So in fact, by the time we get out of this room, Gemini 3.5 might be out and we're already going to be behind the curve. So how do I have something that helps me concentrate the knowledge I need to have and put it right next to me so that I don't have to keep everything in my head and I can somehow stay up to date? Does that make sense? That's kind of where we want to go. All right. So... Gemini Cloud Assist hits on at least these three broad use cases. So when people want help with designing applications, when you want to start something from the ground up, when you want to optimize something that's running or you want to operate something that's already in your platform better, that's kind of what we're going to talk about. And, and what's cool about this is for folks who have wondered how to get value from AI when you're not building AI, this is one of the ways to do that. How can it supercharge or accelerate some things that I'm already doing? And so this is where we're going to be specifically. So I want to make sure you can take a look at this. The Gemini for Google Cloud portfolio has several different things in it. We're going to be in this first piece, Gemini Cloud Assist, and then we're going to talk about Gemini Code Assist, another presenter. We'll talk about that later today. But there's a whole suite or a portfolio of things that we're not going to get into today, but just understand that this extensible intelligence is going to be woven throughout the entire Google Cloud platform. So that large language model is going to supercharge everything that people are doing. That's where we're going. But again, we're going to just focus on that first pillar for today. And so with that said, I'd love to get into a little bit of a demo and do some show and tell. So we're going to see how we can make this work. Got to kind of suspend the laptop in the air a little bit, but let's see if we can. Work. So this is uh, maybe some of y'all's first look at Gemini 
Cloud Assist. So I'm going to zoom into different things. And so what's interesting about this is an interesting test too, right? Because I've only got one hand, so I can't copy and paste a bunch of different stuff. I'm going through some of this raw and being vulnerable with one hand. And I'll zoom in and out so you all can see things. But a couple of things are interesting about this. So there are some insights that are surfaced right from the beginning. And I'm going to zoom in and out if I can with my mouse so we can kind of go a little deeper. So I'm going to start here because FinOps is a huge thing that we talk about, right? We've got to be efficient. We need to make sure that we're reducing waste. And so I love the Gemini services opportunities for me to save costs. And you'll see some things that we've talked about before. So for example, remember when William talked about autopilot mode, where someone asked, how do I know if some of my clusters are a candidate for autopilot? Well, Gemini helps answer that question for me, right? So what does that look like? So I've got two clusters that may be a candidate for autopilot mode. I can click on that and I can go deeper if I want to. So we think of Gemini as resource aware AI powered insights. So this is telling me the particular clusters that can migrate to autopilot if I want to do that. If I click into this one more time, I love this context that I'm getting. So this particular cluster isn't maximizing CPU and memory potential, which means you're using resources inefficiently, right? What's cool about this, we might have talked about this in the earlier section, but GK standard you pay for was allocated, GK autopilot pay for was used. So if you don't believe you can be efficient tuning all the dials manually and you want to let the system do it, Autopilot will do that. But what's cool about this also is I've got a video here if I don't know what Autopilot is where I can see that right in the context. I can see best practices. I can see cost benefits. I've even got a command that I can copy and run this right in the CLI for what does it look like to see if my workload is compatible. So if you don't believe Gemini, you can run the command for yourself and actually go pretty deep if you want to. Do you have to ask the question or do I didn't ask the question. That's a great, great question, Jeff. So what happened was I leaned into what we call these smart actions. So what's cool about this is there are things that surface in the UI. Some call them intelligent chips or smart actions. Um, but I can surface things in the UI. I can go into Gemini and chat directly and ask these questions. Or I can click on these smart action buttons, for example, and say something like explain autopilot mode, which pops up this prompt here on the side and then we'll generate a question. So this is how I can have kind of reusable prompts that I can share with my colleagues. But I can start, I'm starting from the UI purposely because I'm only using one hand here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how I started in this particular case. I started from the insights that were surfaced in the UI. Okay. So that's the cost stuff. Now, you all know as seasoned professionals, I'm from Charlotte, we say seasoned, not old, like I said this morning, more life marinade, right? Which also means battle scars and sometimes trauma. How many of us would say that every upgrade we've ever done in our lives has gone perfectly? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're in the house. So look, so the next thing that we see is around upgrades. So we've got some insights around upgrades. And this is, to me, uh, one of the things that may save people a lot of toil is give us some insights about stuff that didn't go quite right before. And how many people know that sometimes when upgrades don't go quite right, there are those gremlins that don't bite you right then but they're hiding in the closet to jump out right at the time when you were about to, you know, that Friday night when you had something planned with your significant other and then that thing jumps up to bite you. So we're trying to protect against some of that. So the, the upgrade insights let you see, for example, I don't have a maintenance window set. And if I don't know what that means, again, what I love about this training doesn't age well when you can't apply it. If I don't know what maintenance windows are, I can explain maintenance windows. I can get maintenance window best practices. I can understand how to set, like this is all right here in the console. I don't have to be an expert. Gemini's like that, that friend who's whispering in my ear, like you need to pay attention to this because this could bite you later. So I love this because this feels like I'm giving, I'm getting help from Google Cloud where I may not be an expert or things may be changing, or there could just be something that I missed. So if I want to look at how to set a maintenance window, right? No maintenance window set. Uh, it could mean that something could break at a time that I don't want, right? It's giving me kind of a layman's definition. I don't have to be an expert and I can go deeper if I want to do that. This is kind of the pattern. Surface it, give me an explanation. Let me go deeper. Give me some context about what it is. And again, I can get definitions all the way down to commands even that I can run if I want to. So uh, this is just insights and, and they've, it's shown how to uh, take those actions. Are there any insights that Gemini can actually take the action itself or link directly to where you would take the action? So it, it doesn't take the action itself. It gets you really, really close though to make sure that you're good with it. So um, that's a great example. I'm gonna double back to something that I skipped over before. So 
uh, in Insights, I've got this review idle clusters thing. I don't necessarily want Gemini to do that by itself. So it's telling me the clusters that are idle, and it's actually telling me, sorry, I'm zooming in a little bit kind of oddly, right? I've got low utilization in this for the last 30 days, and I've got, I can dive deeper into metrics and all that, but I definitely want the user to confirm that. Maybe that was idle for a reason because we're getting ready for BFCM or some anticipated demand that's going to spike up. So right now, specifically, it will not act on it, but it's going to get you as close as you can to try to minimize your time and surface where you want to pay attention. Yeah, and when you clicked on that cluster in Insights, it brought you right to the cluster, and in this page, you could you could shut it down. Exactly. You could get. Um, I don't know if I could shut it down right from this page. I think I can get pretty close to that. Even it'll walk me up to I think copy this command and run this in the CLI. It gets you almost right there. In some cases, there is a button that you can act on, but it gets you really, really close. Um, the interesting thing about this, too, is you're surfacing these resource-aware insights from the console, but if I were to ask questions in the chat, the answers in the chat are also contextually aware of my resources. It'll tell me this cluster is something where you can save money, or this is a particular uh, set of pods that might be in trouble. So the all sorts of things that it gives you insight into. Let me kind of walk back to where I was before. And, and the answer there is going to... Uh not go to Reddit, it's going to only search your documentation. Correct. It's going to search Google documentation. It's going to look at blogs. It's going to look at best practices. It might go to jumps, but it's going to keep you inside of Google. But Google may have sourced information previously from those other locations. So there are three classes of insights here, health, upgrade, and cost? Yes. This, this last one is cost, which is going to depend on, uh, I guess, how, how much housekeeping you have that's been deferred. Right, so, or how much uh, FinOps technical debt you might have. Specifically for server instances. Uh, so these are, this is particularly for GKE in this context. GKE. Okay. Right, but this applies to GCE, this applies to Cloud Run. So what's powerful about this is in this environment, this is focused on GKE to be quite honest, but this is actually going to give me insights about anything that's running in my project, right? And so I could say, for example, I could do a prompt um, show me opportunities to save money. And it'll show me Cloud Run stuff, GCE stuff, GKE stuff. It might show me databases. The tab there on the, on the side there is a storage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I don't, Insights for storage. I don't think we have, um, again, this is, a, this is a private preview. It's a demo environment. I don't think we have storage insights on yet, but we do have a segment about that later in the day. So you may get, you may get that itch scratched a little bit later in a different session. <laughs> Are there user levels? Because I don't know if I want to have everybody ask how to yeah. fix a cluster. Yes, that's a great question. That's a good reason to sign up for a private preview to give us that insight. Okay. <laughs> right. I, yeah, well, I don't want somebody going looking for the answer and then also uh, snooping around the network and, and seeing what what's in the network as well. Yeah. So. One thing to be able to ask a question. <laughs> uh, in some cases, no. Hmm. The, the thing that I will say, Jeff, is the Gemini right now is doing this in the context of a project you already have access to. So I don't know if we have, you know, that level of our back or different yeah. roles at this point, but the default is you're only able to look at or ask questions about things that are in your project that you have access to, okay. which yeah. is governed by IAM and the other. Because yeah. the, the way I see it, it let's, say, let's say I'm administrating a network and I bring in Alistair as a contractor, yep. and, and I want him to only be focusing on this thing. I don't want mm -hmm. him to be going, oh, there's a problem here. Right. How do I solve it? I'd rather have him keep focused on that and then tell me yeah. there's something going on, and I'll, I'll research it. That, that's fair, but again, I'll go back to if, you, if he has access to a project, he can already touch the resources at the level governed by the IAM in that project. So there could be some corner cases that we want to explore, but again, great question. I just don't know that we're there just yet. Okay. Um, last one I'll go to, so health insights. So what I love about this is, you know, before something becomes a big problem and something could just be on my radar, I might have a general question around you know, I've got some unsupported SKUs. I don't have resource limits set. For those who know Kubernetes, you know that this can be a problem that can really bite you. Um, how do I make sure my application is highly available? This is going to kick out to the window on the side. Sorry for the, for the different zooming. But this is how do I ensure my application is highly available, right? This is kind of one of those open-ended questions 
um, where Gemini has given me, again, pretty interesting information. So affected workloads, again, resource aware. This is not generic advice. These are particular things where specific resources could be affected by this particular thing. I've got a recommendation for what I should do around these different pieces and you know disruption budgets. I can go further in that if I wanna learn more. Again, right here in the context of the console. So before I hand off to our next presenter, I wanna show you one more thing. And we gotta put the laptop down for this because I do need to type. One, you can actually pop this out into a full page if you wanna just go straight to the chat. If you know the prompt that you wanna ask or you wanna type something freehand, I wanna do something like this. Show me an example of a GKE Java application. Because maybe you wanna start from a prescriptive starting point rather than troubleshooting something that's already uh, in trouble. And so this actually surfaces a Java web application that comes from one of our quick starts. So think about it this way, if you don't have to be an expert in all the good stuff that Google has out there, you can ask a question and it can point you to, hey, you don't have to do this from scratch. You can spin this up, it tells you the products that are involved, even gives you a cost estimate. So again, training doesn't age well. Discovery is also hard when you have so many things that are coming at you. This is one of the best ways to stay on top of how to optimize your resources. Again, AI in your platform, or even if you're not doing anything directly with AI, Jim and I can actually give you some lift. And for the audience that's uh, listening with us online, I think what would be really powerful is if any of this seems like something that they'd be interested in. Again, we are actively and openly listening to feedback from our folks and from our users. And so literally, if you're someone who just stumbled across this video or is watching online and you have an interest, you've never done stuff in Google Cloud before, but you wanna play with this, we can sign you up for this, right? So take a look at, I'll leave this here so you all can take a picture. <clears throat> but if you want to play with this, take a look at the QR code, hit the URL, let us know you're interested. And this is not vaporware, right? We are, this is actively, uh, it's not in production, but it's working in private preview. And we'd love to sign up people for this and uh, get access to your questions. I've got Frank Curry there, shout out to Frank Curry. He's the actual PM for Gemini Cloud Assist from a GKA perspective. I'm actually building on a lot of his work. And so we tag team on this, but Frank has done a great job curating user journeys and trying to understand how to apply this. So thank you all for listening.